now that we have a few different MIDI clips with a few different drum beats, uh, some drum beat variation going on, what else can we do to make our drums sound a little bit less repetitive and a little bit less loop based? Well, one thing we could definitely do would be to uh, start automating some of these macro knobs and kind of change what they're doing over the course of the clip. So before we just start doing that and recording things all willy nilly, let's get an idea of how this is actually gonna affect our drum beat. And let's see, I think this one is the one. All right, so in here we have a kick. This is kick tone. It's making the kick sound a little bit brighter on the attack. Our snare tone. Okay, so that makes quite a bit of difference. The cymbal decay. Now that, I like the effect of that a lot. I think that's pretty cool. Then we also have our snare and clap decay. So we can make the snare and the clap a lot shorter. So I think playing around with these two could be very interesting. And one way we could do this is by using clip envelopes. Another way we could do it is by recording this in real time. And since we haven't really done that yet, let's focus on that. Now, if I look at my clip again, I'm dealing with a one bar clip. Ideally, I'd like to record this automation for longer than just one bar. So an easy way to deal with that, since I have this one bar pattern, in my MIDI clip properties over here, I have a button that says duplicate loop, and I can simply duplicate this a few more times. So now it's two bars, now it's four bars, and now it's eight bars. So now I have eight bars to work with where I can record this automation. Now, if you remember, when we recorded into a pre-existing clip, we had to use this button here, the circle button, and this allows us to record into clips in the session view. But this is mainly for recording notes. What if we wanna record automation? Well, this button over here, this looks like a little barbell turned to the side. This needs to be enabled in order to record automation into our session view clips. If this is not on, you won't be able to record any changes that you're making to specific parameters in a clip. So once this is on, the minute we hit the circle button here to start recording into this clip, any changes that I make to any parameters in this instrument will get recorded into this clip. So I don't have to create a clip envelope. All I have to do now is adjust a parameter. So I think adjusting the symbols decay would be cool. So I'm gonna start adjusting this now. And you can see, as I turn it, there's a little red dot there. And I'm gonna start to increase this. There we go. I'll get out of the session view recording mode. And we can see that automation has been recorded there. If I go back to the clip view, what happens if I want to edit or modify the automation I've just recorded? Well, that automation got recorded inside of a clip envelope. So if we go down here and we click on the E to show our clip envelope, the last thing that we touched is the first thing that shows up in the clip envelope. And the last thing that we touched was the symbol decay. So now I can see the clip envelope for that right here. And if I wanna edit it, I can simply highlight and delete some of these breakpoints, change the curve of this, however I wanna do it. Now let's say, let me go ahead and just do that. I'm gonna be kinda cool. Just getting crazy. All right, so that's the symbol decay. That's pretty cool, I like that. Let's record some automation to a different parameter. How about the snare and clap decay? Something like that. So my automation arm button's already on. Turn on a session view recording. Bring it down to snap, uh, snare and clap decay. Very cool, very cool. Okay, so just by doing those two things, what was once a one bar drum beat, now has a lot more change, a lot more variation. It doesn't sound quite as static or uh, as loop based, mainly just because we're automating things uh, that have been assigned to these macro knobs. Now, before we move on, let's go back to the clip envelope. 
We didn't select anything in here because the last thing we touched is the first thing that showed up. Now, if we start to uh, look at these chooser boxes here, the top chooser box, now we have a lot of options, okay? We didn't see all this stuff when we were uh, dealing with clip envelopes on the audio clips. And that's because the drum rack, like I said, is a container device and it contains a bunch of other devices. In this case, it contains a bunch of simpler devices that have samples loaded into them. And there's a bunch of places where we can automate certain things. We can automate stuff within the mixer on the drum rack. We can automate parameters of the instruments inside of the drum rack. And then we can automate the macro knobs. So there's a lot of different places for uh, clip envelopes to be drawn in. So that's why I emphasize the last thing that you touch on the device is what shows up for your clip envelope. It makes it significantly easier to find a specific parameter. For instance, I wanna to go to the kick tone. I click on the kick tone. The shortcut for going back and forth between the clip view and device view is shift and tab. That makes it a little bit easier. So the last thing I touched was the knob for the kick tone and look, there's the kick tone right there. Okay, so once you start dealing with bigger chains of devices, if you have a bunch of different effects, or you're dealing with a, uh, an instrument rack, a drum rack, just keep in mind that the last parameter you touch is what shows up in the clip envelope here. So again, if I wanted to automate or edit the automation for the snare clap decay, I can click on that knob, shift, tab, and now that's what shows up in my envelope.